All right, Saturday, it's my last Saturday here that I'm gonna be in Anita. I decided to end my trip a little bit early, head back to the US so I can kind of get back to my normal life. And uh, usually Saturday I ride with this group called the Thiwalogs. And the people that I met in 2016, they go out on these suffer sessions, very similar to what I was doing like in LA. You have a group of people that just go out there and just wanna kill each other, but yet, they're just cycling nerds, they love to have fun, talk bikes, and uh, just great people. So anyways, we're going towards the Ligan, and the ride today is gonna be about 60 plus miles with about 6,000 feet of climbing. <clears throat> and most people do it on their mountain bike. I'm gonna try it on my road bike. So this road bike, this is probably one, if not the last time I'm gonna ride this. This is something I've had for six years. I got it built up when I was at Cycle World. It was an LA frame. Anyways, Rex, Sexy Rexy is gonna be the new owner of the bike. And when I get back to the US, I have a new bike waiting for me. So <clears throat> anyways, I'm gonna ride out to them, to my house or from my house to now. I want to meet at 7-Eleven group by 5 30 i got a few minutes so i'm gonna put it down and hopefully today i don't die but i'll do my best to not be a bitch all right whoa hey you recording again oh shit i can't get out of my clip are you are you taki taki? Ah yeah. Hey Mike. What's happening? Let's get it right again. <laughs> bira bira. Here in the Philippines, you ride what you got. Uh, most people they don't have like three bikes like everyone in the U.S. does or five or whatever M plus one. Over here it's just one. So usually when we ride, there's like if I'm riding my road bikes, there's these guys that are these kids or whoever usually on their mountain bikes and they're just freaking beasts. And like going up a hill, riding majority on the road, they're still kicking my ass on these mountain bikes that are like 30 plus pounds, maybe even 32 with these heavy ass wheels. And I just question that if they were on like actual road bikes, how much faster they would be. And one of the great things I appreciate about people over here is that their level of fitness is just amazing. And their passion for cycling is, is just as insane as well. So. You know, it's not so much about getting caught up in the gear or the bike. Obviously, they love eye candy, but you know, riding with these guys is very humbling because you obviously don't need a nice bike to be fast. You don't need a nice bike to love cycling. You just gotta go out and do it, and that's what these guys do. They show up every day. A couple of us on our road bikes, these guys are mountain bikes, and they're gonna kick our ass, and so looking forward to it. And we got Rex over here, one of our fearless leaders and he's helped put the group rides together every week helps decide the routes and he's the guy that i eat liampo with as much as i can and hopefully today we eat as much as possible before i leave and this is royal panda don't ever fucking go there unless you want to eat with a bunch of flies the food is like really low quality but yet that's just kind of like if you want to take someone on a hot date whoa that's where you go okay i'm gonna try not to die about 50 kilometers to go one way then 50 kilometers back the other way the real climbing doesn't begin until probably about 20 30 kilometers into the ride One thing for sure, which I didn't catch this on video, but oh. uh, cars here are pretty dumb. They'll pull out in front of you. You're running a pace line. There's like eight of us doing about 35 kilometers per hour. And uh, this car literally decided at the very last second to pull out in front of us. We all had to hit our brakes, spread like ants, so we don't go down. But 
that's part of the process of riding here in the highway, but we got Gazi. Are you part of the Gazi strip? Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> this guy, he's got legs for days and he just always feels like riding fast all the time. So I don't know what's wrong with him. He only has one speed. And this guy is still for hire. So I'm putting a new ad again. If you're 65 and you're lonely, uh, this guy is the guy for you. Oh, Mario showed up. Okay, so we're starting the climb. It's gonna be about 20 kilometers to the first place. We keep saying a steel bridge. And this is mostly uphill, not too crazy, but I guess when we hit that steel bridge, that's when it gets really gnarly, like 15 to 20%, and it's about seven kilometers. Uh, so I just told him I'm just gonna do my ride because I have no idea. Plus hitting anything over 13% on a road bike is really tough. I'll probably be in the lowest gear, off the saddle, doing squats and lunges on my bike. So this way I don't die, or not die, but so I make it to the top. Otherwise, who knows, I might have to get off and walk. And here's another guy on here. Anyways, we'll ride to the bridge. All right, we just did the first climb and oh my God, that was already like, easier gear that was like 13 to 15 percent uh off the saddle the whole time and that was literally just the first little bit maybe like i don't know not even a 10 minute climb and now we're hitting another one so probably not gonna be recording too much because i just want to get to the top with the least amount of effort and until I figure out this whole camera situation. Recording with a phone is awkward. So, I'll see you at the top. Okay. I thought this looked kind of nice over here. This is a little bit of the view of the climb. These climbs are brutal. We just hit a 20% climb grade downhill again. And, uh, whew. All right, road bike, tough. So, we finished the first part of this climb and, uh, there's some brutal sections in there and I'm definitely not looking forward to coming back because there's a lot of uphill and downhills, uh, a lot of sections that are 15 to 20% and it's sustained 15 to 20% and oof, uh, now I guess we'll have to see what happens. All right, we're mostly up the way up the big climb. This is fucking hard. It's like 17, 18% nonstop and I'm just off the side of the whole time. I need to stop and take a break. I made some little spam. I'm gonna eat something, get some fuel in my body to eat. Uh, Rexy over here seems to not have a problem right now. Hi. So I finally made it to the top. I don't know where those guys are going, but I'll let this guy go. Oh, that was freaking brutal. I definitely don't want to do that again. At least not on a road bike gearing. Oh, hey, what's up? Ah. Died. You know. Yo, I'm okay. I just need some coke and uh, maybe a massage. You give a massage? Oof. Uh, it was a... <laughs> All right, well, little kid riding ATV, but nothing beats a coke, ice cold coke, when uh, you're riding and suffering. Uh, I can't even hold the bottle. Right now. Shaking on that. We survived. I'm so hungry. hungry? Super hungry. Yeah. yeah. I'll give you some of this. I want to drink soda. There's soda there. Now to go back down the hill. My phone's about to die. So I'm riding back and surviving. Two more hours. Oh, crap. Still got like another 20k to go. My legs are dead. Sun's hot. I took off. There's headwind around by myself. My legs are low bat. My phone is low bat. My Garmin is low bat. But it's all good. I'll make it home and uh, eat some Liambo, I guess. Whew. A little view after the ride. That was definitely fucking hard. Did. 110 kilometers 
almost 5,000 feet, 4,700 plus feet of climbing. And the problem with that ride was all the climbing was just in a very small section. And that was hot. Um, <clears throat> and it was hot. I went through four bottles of water. I had spam, but I ate a couple pieces of that, but I did the whole thing pretty much fasted and uh, had some Coke, but it wasn't so much about my cardio, it was more about my legs. Just plus my ass being on the bike that long it takes, <clears throat> you gotta build up that callus in your, around your butthole, to be honest, to be able to hang for rides that long. I personally don't like rides that long. I think four hours is like the perfect time for me to ride. Anything after that is becomes a suffer fest and a mind fuck. The last 20 kilometers, I was struggling coming back home. I just put in the easiest gear I could and just spun all the way, tried it, but always just riding at the very limit. And that's riding. <clears throat> you know, this is my last ride here. Um, I don't know when I'm coming back. I'm definitely not coming back until the restrictions are gone because I just can't go a third year in a row of quarantine. But we'll see. For now, um, this is a video that I'm just trying out. I see a lot of bike vloggers. I like what they do. And uh, maybe many more adventures to come. Right. How was your solo ride? <laughs> that one sucked. <laughs> I was struggling so bad. Like, I was just like, oh God. I just had to take it one town after a town. Out. Okay, Lugai to Mantika, Mantika to Naawan, Naawan to that. All right, the last uphill. I'm like, talking to myself the whole time <laughs> and I'm just thinking about this but yeah that was uh that was definitely one of the harder rides I've done in a while just because all the elevation was just in a short distance you know 